Christ lived under God's word. Welcome to the club. There's going to be a raging fire with the breath of God breathing upon it. And as he breathes upon that fire, an instrument shall raise up out of that fire. Spiritual, anointed, living truth. It's one thing to hear the word. It's another thing to be under the presence of God and to be on the fire of the Holy Ghost. And to know that you know that the word that's coming forth is from the throne room. It is time to be a royal priesthood and a holy nation. It is time to be the sons and daughters of a living God. It's time for the roar of the lion to be restored in God's name. Hey everyone, welcome to the club, Christ Living Undivided Bride. We are Revival for Christ Club International Ministry, a ministry with a vision built on a plan, the Word of God. I am Chief Apostle Timothy Vanover. This is my lovely wife, Apostle Hello. Jenny Vanover, and we are thrilled to have you with us today because we're going to share with you the most exciting thing in our life. His name? Jesus Christ. Amen. We're glad you're here. Now, my beautiful wife's got a scripture. Sit back and relax oh, as she blesses yes. you with the word of God. I am so fired up about this scripture. Psalm 68 in verse 6. It says, the Lord brings out those that are bound with chains. How yes, are we as praise some God. of you Amen. who feel like the enemy has you bound in a spiritual yes, chain? God. God says he will deliver you by yes, the fire our God is a and the power and the deliverance yes, of God. his Amen. word. Amen. And the also says, but the rebellious Ooh. dwell in a dry land. And I just want to tell you right now, do not fight those who have spiritual authority over you. Yes, and amen. do not be rebellious to the Lord. When God corrects you and God instructs you, count it as a blessing. Because if you don't, yes, there will be no peace of mind. There will yes, be no Lord, joy on, in your life. And when you don't have peace of mind, your mind turns and feeds on negative things. So today, grab a hold of all that the power of the yes, Holy President. Ghost has for you today. And let's remember that our Father is a great Father. Yeah. He is a good Father, just like any other Father. When our Father comes to you and brings correction or is trying to instruct you, He's not there to injure you. He's not there to hurt you. He's trying to help you. He's trying to push you in a direction yes, that will cause you to grow and develop and be what He's called you to be. All right, now what we want you to do is sit back and relax. We've got our Winds of Fire flag team coming up right now, and they're going to do a song. What's it called? It is called Warrior. Okay. <laughs>
Right now, there's something very exciting happening at Revival for Christ Club. You can be a part of it. We're right in the middle right now of an exciting revival with national evangelist Alethea Colley. I want you to sit back right now, and they're going to tell you a little more about removing the grave clothes. Revival for Christ Club International Ministry, a ministry with a vision built on a plan, the Word of God. And he's going to come in, whatever those idols are in your life, whatever those things are that has put you into bondage, honey, those things, honey, are going to shake. They're going to totter at the presence of God. And as God comes in to your midst, as he comes riding in to the midst of this vessel, into the areas of your heart, whatever those Egypts are in your life, those rooms, those areas in your life that may be those idols, honey, that keep you held down, that keep you locked up in bondage. We will use every resource available that the eyes of the world may be enlightened and to know and understand the fullness of Jesus Christ. I promise you, if you come out to that revival, you will not be disappointed. I'll tell you, I've known Sister Alethea since she was 11 years old. And she's a powerful and anointed yes, woman of God. She she's served God all of her life. Single mom at one time by herself. She has been through a lot of challenges and adversity and has always been an overcomer. Come check out the revival this week at Revival for Christ Club. Right now, Jenny, we've got the message coming up. You want to tell us a little yes, bit about it? Yes, this is one of my favorite messages that God has put upon your heart. Secret Disciples, part two. Part two. To the Holy Spirit tonight. Holy Ghost, take complete control. Holy Ghost, complete manifestation in this place. You are the teacher. Holy Ghost, by the blood of Jesus Christ, touch this message tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen. Praise Lord, you may be seated if you want to, but sit down with a shout, amen. When he loves shouting, don't we? Praise God, amen. All right, now, please the Lord. I had started a message on Sunday that I want to get back into just a little bit. We started a message on Sunday about secret to save disciples and undercover angels. And what I mean by that is that's people who like to think of themselves as a disciple, but they don't do anything to define it. They don't do anything really to establish it or to bring it forward. And same thing with undercover angels. They like to think they're these really good people, really doing good things, really helping people, but they're only doing things based on flesh concept, not based on spiritual concept. Can you say praise God? We get so busy sometimes molly coddling the flesh, that becomes a way of we think we're ministering. Let me explain something to you. Molly coddling the flesh is not ministering. Coming up and just petting somebody's flesh is not ministering. You need to understand what John 6, 6, 3 says. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits you nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You cannot justify the flesh. Not today, not tomorrow, not next week, not ever. There's one thing I'll make you a promise. You can look this up and cover it in your Bible from cover to cover. There's one thing I promise you will never make heaven, and that's your flesh. Your flesh will never make heaven. But the one thing that will make heaven is your spiritual man. So why are you not feeding him? Why are you not causing that spiritual man to increase? Why are you not establishing that spiritual man? You're so worried about all the things that's happening over here and all the things happening over there and this and that. But what you need to do is get down on your face before God and say, God, I'm going to concern myself with your word. I'm going to concern myself with your spirit. I'm going to concern myself with the calling and the purpose that you place in me. That's what we need to be concerning ourselves with. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our hunger and our desire should be for God. It should be for His Word. It should be for His transformation and manifestation in us. Too many churches and ministers today have adopted the secret disciple and undercover angel system of ministry, trying to find a perfect balance between the world and and God. Honey, my Bible tells me what fellowship does God have with Bella. My Bible tells me have no fellowship with this world. So how are you justifying that? You're justifying that by your carnal mind, by your flesh. Romans 8 says the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God and neither indeed can it be. When you operate by the carnal mind, you are operating by a contaminated element that cannot bring you to truth or excellence. 
will only bring you to flesh. I believe Romans 8 says, they that operate the carnal mind concern themselves with carnal things. He that has the mind of the flesh minds the what? Flesh. He that has the mind of the spirit concerns himself with what? Things of the spirit. We need to understand something. There is a spiritual revolution taking place in the Christian church today. And that revolution is making a statement. It's standing up and saying, are we going to do this with a half-hearted service? Are we going to do this just part-time? Are we going to be part-time believers, part-time Christians, undercover angels, secret disciples? Is that what we're going to be? Are we going to rise up and be what God called us to be? Are we going to be that city upon a hill that cannot be hid? Is the light going to shine in us? Is the anointing and the power of God to permeate through our actions and our speech? You need to understand something. If you're looking for excuses to live in the world, you're not looking for a mission to be obedient to God. Understand me. If you're looking for ways to make the world happy, looking for ways that you can consume yourself in the world, you're not looking for the right things. Amen? You're not looking for the right things. This balance that they're looking for does not exist. First, the kingdom of heaven and all these other things will be added to you. Seek ye first. The kingdom of heaven. I'm sorry, I did not hear you. What does the Bible say? Seek ye what? What are you supposed to seek first? Seek what? If I'm seeking wealth, that is not seeking the kingdom of heaven first. If I'm seeking pleasure, that is not seeking the kingdom of God. That is not putting God first. If I'm seeking any wealth or fame or any element that adds the dimensions of my flesh, I am not seeking the kingdom of God. Now the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Everything else will be added to you. Is that what it not says? What else does it say? The kingdom of God is not what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what is the kingdom of God not? I'm sorry, what is the kingdom of God not? The Bible says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness, it is peace, it is joy. I can't hear you. It is righteousness, peace, and joy. Not in the things you get from the world. Not in the things you lust for in the world. Not in the things you desire for the world. But I want to tell you something. It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And explain to me how your flesh sticks around if the Holy Ghost is given free liberty. My Bible tells me the spirit and the flesh are contrary one to another. That if you try to have them both in there, you won't get anything done. So if you're trying to find a perfect balance of God in the world, you basically eliminate anything you're ever going to do. You'll never get nothing done. For the flesh and the spirit are contrary one to another. If you're operating in the flesh, it's not going to do the things the spirit wants to do. If you're operating in the spirit, it's not going to do the things the flesh wants to do. You have to come to a decision whose child you are. And can I explain to you how this works? You need to figure out who you belong to. You need to figure out who you're connected to. You need to figure out what your inheritance is. Can I tell you what I mean by that? The carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, and even can it be. To be in your flesh, to walk and live and operate under the influence of your flesh means you have a master. And your master is the devil because he eats the dust of this earth. He eats sin. He eats those things. And you understand something? If you're operating by physical desires, if you're operating by your carnal mind and your flesh to make determinations and decide things, then you are operating under your, de- under your father, the devil. And you say, Brother Vano, how can you say that? Because the Bible says, you, if you knew my father, you would love me. He said, but you do not love me and you hate me because of you. you're of your father. You're of your father. You're of the devil. He was a liar from the beginning and he's still a liar. Now you need to understand something. You got to make up your mind what your birthright is today. Is your birthright going to be flesh? Is your birthright going to be the world? Or is your birthright going to be the spirit and the anointing of a living God? You put your judgment. This, this just blows my mind. Your judgment of what is God or not is God is flesh. 
It's not got nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. Got nothing to do with the Word. Got nothing to do with Spirit. Got nothing to do with that. Honey, let me tell you something. Holy Ghost is bigger than you. Spirit of God is bigger than you. The anointing is bigger than you. Your judgments don't mean anything when they come to the foot of Christ. Your judgments don't mean anything when they've been based on your physical carnal knowledge and perception. Let me tell you something. God is looking for a spiritual nation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. There will be anointed under His Spirit. And they will be the sons and daughters of God. I believe it says as many as led by, they are. I don't see anything about being led by the flesh. Do you? As many as led by the, as many as led by the. And can I tell you something about being led by the Spirit? When the Spirit starts leading you, your flesh ain't going to like it. When the Spirit starts leading you, your flesh doesn't like it. Because part of the Spirit's leading is to extinguish your flesh. And to bring God forward. Amen? Go with me, if you will, please. I want you to go with me to the book of Deuteronomy. We're going to go to Deuteronomy. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good today. I love him. Everything is good. Deuteronomy 6. I'm going to read something to you. See, I'm going to explain something to you. going to make you mad, and you'll get glad again. I hope. Amen? Let me explain something to you tonight. You are the blood-bought church. You are the church of the redeemed. You are not your own. You do not belong to yourself. If I'm not mistaken, Jesus paid for you, did he not? Jesus paid for your sins. He paid for your disobedience. And now he wants you to walk in your inheritance. He wants you to walk in your spiritual inheritance. But the first thing you need to figure out about this thing, and this is where one of the biggest misconceptions, one of the biggest problems in Christianity has occurred. And that is in trying to compromise the gospel, trying to compromise the anointing, trying to compromise the spirit. So now what we say is the word is outdated. It no longer meets the needs of today. The Holy Ghost, we've had it, got it, we don't need it anymore. These are lies from the devil to continue to perpetrate the contamination and the rot that he has planted in the church house. Let me explain to you what I'm talking about. There needs to be a purifying. There needs to be a pruning in the body of Christ. If you don't know whether you're being led by the Spirit or by flesh, you need to be sure from the top of your head to the sole of your feet until the Spirit of God is operating and moving in you. Till the anointing of God is living in you. That Bible doesn't say as many as led by the flesh, they are my children. That says, the Bible says as many as led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. The Bible says God is a what? God is a what? God is a what? I got some news for you, Daryl, going to blow you away. God's not flesh. Come on, you didn't hear me. I said God is not flesh. So when your flesh desires the things of the world, you need to understand something. God don't get you. You get me? When you start wanting the things of the world, God says, why would you want that? That's going to kill you. That's going to destroy you. What you need to want is my word. What you need to want is my spirit. What you need to want is my voice. Let me tell you something, church. We're looking for all these balances. We're looking for this. We're looking for that. I'll tell you what we need to be looking for. We need to be looking for the voice of the Lord. We need to be saying, God, fill me with your voice. God, establish me in your voice. God, anoint me in your voice. Your voice is more important. Than all the things in the world. Go and buy. I don't understand. I've never figured out this part time Christianity. I've never understood serving the Lord with a partial heart. Let me show you what I mean. Go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Thank you, Jesus. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. And we're going to start reading the very first verse. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you. That uh, ye might do them in the land, whether you go to possess it. And that thou mightest fear the Lord God and keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy sons and thy sons' sons, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that you may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. The Lord our God is what? 
He is one Lord. There will be no other Lords. There will be no other gods. There will be no one else. He is God. And look what it says. I love this part. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with 10% of your heart, with 50% of your heart, with 60% of your heart. What does that say? With all. What's that mean? 100%. With all your heart. Oh, somebody say amen. All thy soul and all thy mind. That doesn't leave a lot of time to do anything else, does it? Are you listening to me? That don't leave a lot of time doing this. You're going to serve with all your heart? Come on, look what it says. I didn't write it. Let's serve with all my heart, all of my soul, and all of my mind. All of my strength, all of my soul, all of my heart, I'm going to serve the Lord. Everywhere I go, I will hear the voice. Everywhere I go, the voice will be established. Everywhere I go, the voice will direct my steps. I will serve him with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. And if you think you're going to get a relationship with God doing anything less, you fooled yourself. He's not looking for partial service. He's looking for surrender. He's looking for sellout. He's looking for you to say, God, no more with my way. I abandon my way, and I embrace your way. No longer what I think, God, what you think. No longer, God, what I want to do, but what you want to do. God, let your spirit, let your power, let your anointing, let your authority begin to come alive in me. So we see all the way back in Deuteronomy, all the way back to the very first night, God said to us that we have to do something. He gave us a condition. You guys heard me preach on the requirement not too long ago. Well, there's a condition. And the condition is you need to serve the Lord God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. Instead of trying to come up with more ways not to serve him, why don't you come up with more ways to serve him? See, we're coming up with more ways how I don't have to serve God. That's too much. I have actually heard ministers say this. I have actually had ministers say this to me. Brother Vanover, you do too much. Brother Vanover, I'm doing all I want to do, and I don't want to add any programs, and I don't want to do this, and I don't want to do that, because that's more work than I want to do. And to me, baby, you're a hireling. When you got that mentality, you're a hireling. Let me tell you something. For all the rest of the days of my life, as long as there's breath in me, as long as the hand of God is on me, as long as the anointing the Spirit of God is with me, I'm going 100%, full bore, all the way, all my heart, all my soul, all my might. I'm going to spend the rest of my life serving God. I'm going to spend the rest of my life preaching His Word. I'm going to spend the rest of my life giving opportunity to the men and women of God to bring together unity and revival through the body of Christ. Through the body of Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's short that I'm going to see. Go with me. St. Matthew 22. I'll try not to hold you too long tonight. I know some of y'all need a nap. St. Matthew 22. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. Love the Lord. Love you tonight. St. Matthew chapter 22. Thank you. This is Jesus talking, red letter edition. So you can't argue. Okay, go with me, if you would please, to 17. I want you to go with me to 17. First he tells them, Tell us therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? They were trying to trip Jesus up in his words. And they wanted to ask him, say, do you, they wanted to get him to say it wasn't good to give it to Caesar so that they could persecute him, so that they could put him in jeopardy. But Jesus, being smarter than them, answered with wisdom because he was listening to the Lord. So look what he said. And he said, should we give unto Caesar or not? And Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, why tempt ye me, you hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they bought him a penny. And he said unto them, whose is the image and subscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. Then he said unto them, render therefore unto Caesar the things that are Caesar, and render unto God the things that are what? God. I'm sorry. Render unto God the things that are what? You say, Brother Venom, why did you read the scripture? Because I want you to understand something. We, if we are being the people that God has called us to be, there is no Caesar in me. 
Do you understand me? If I'm being the man God called me to be, there is no Caesar in me. That means there's no flesh that I want to listen to. There's no carnal mind that I'm going to subject to. I am a child of the King. I walk by the Spirit. The Word of God is a lamp unto my feet and the anointing and the Holy Ghost speak through me. That's who I am. That's where I want to be. Amen? Somebody say amen. Verse 34, drop down a little bit. Same chapter, verse 34, drop down to 34. And look what it says. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. And then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? So you want to know, what's the great commandment in the law? And there's two parts to this commandment. But it's very difficult, my friend, to get the second part if you don't get the first part. And the first part, he said, Thou shalt love the Lord. This is a red letter edition. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy what? I'm sorry, what he say is the first great commission. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, in all thy mind. So if you're looking any way to alleviate that responsibility, you're eliminating the first great man. If you're trying to say, well, I, I, I ain't got time. To, I got to have some time for my flesh. I got to have a flesh vacation. I can't just be serving God all the time. I just can't be busy for God all the time. Well, thank goodness Jesus didn't think that way. Thank goodness Jesus didn't have to have flesh vacation. Thank goodness Jesus didn't have to take some time off. Honey, let me tell you something. We better figure this out. Either this thing's real or it's not. Either we're in a real spiritual combat or we're not. And if this is a real day and a real hour and a real moment, it is time to stop sitting on the pew and playing. It's time to stop making excuses. We're not just coming to church to clock in and clock out. We're coming to be changed. We're coming to be transformed. We're coming to be rearranged. We're coming to manifest His image and nature. You're not going to get to manifestation when you can't even get past transformation. It's tough to get to manifestation until you get transformed. And you can't get transformed as long as you're making excuses for your flesh. I think the flesh doesn't have no value, does it? I thought it didn't have any. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul. Love thy neighbor as you love yourself. You know exactly what that means? Here's what it means. When I see flesh in you, I'm going to tell you about it, just like I see it in me. You know why? Because I love you like I love me. And I know flesh is detrimental. I know flesh can tear down. I know flesh can destroy. I know flesh can become a distraction. So when I see my brother or sister suffer from the same thing that has hindered me or distracted me, it is my obligation, near hair, my calling to let that person know, hey, man, I don't want flesh to contaminate you. I don't want flesh to tear you down. I don't want flesh to destroy you. Brother, I'm going to come to you and encourage the Spirit. But I'm going to come to you and I'm going to encourage the Holy Ghost. Brother, I'm going to come to you and encourage you to bring your flesh in as objection. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Let the words that you speak not be your words, but let them be His words manifesting in your actions and in your steps. Go with me if you will, please, Jeremiah. Go to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 16. Go with me to Jeremiah 16. And while you're going to Jeremiah 16, I want to remind you of an acronym the Lord gave me a while back. Jeremiah 16. Voice is spelled V-O-I-C-E. 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 Voice. And here's what the Lord showed it to me. It is a victorious overcomer incorporating Christ's excellence. When you hear the voice of God, when the voice of God moves on you, it does not start at a position of failure. It does not start at a position where it's a loss. When the voice of God starts speaking to you, it starts from the position 
of victory. Do you understand me? The voice of God never starts from the position of failure. The voice of God does not speak from the position of being defeated. The voice of God always speaks from being victorious. So when God's voice begins to speak in you, it releases the victory to take the word, to take the spirit, to overcome your flesh. Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. He speaks to you. It releases his voice in you. Victory begins to feel you by the Spirit and the anointing of God. And the things that have defeated you and the things that have overcome you, now you are overcoming them. Now they no longer have a hold on you. Now they no longer have a design on you. And as you begin to overcome those things, you begin to take the knowledge of that victory and the knowledge of that Spirit. You put them together and you begin to incorporate Put into your spirit, put into your soul, put into your mind. You begin to incorporate the excellence of Jesus Christ. His mind, his heart, his personality, his spirit. When the voice of God moves, it rumbles the face of the earth. It releases a victorious ability to overcome. And an ability that even though you're in the flesh, you're not a debtor to the flesh. That even though you live in this flesh, you don't owe this flesh anything. That even though you're in this flesh, this flesh does not call the shots. This flesh does not control you. You are controlled by the anointing of God. You are controlled by the Spirit of God. And that's all that controls you. Amen? Go with me if you would please to Jeremiah chapter 16. The one thing that we need to get in our land more than ever before is the voice of the Lord. Amen? Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 16. Jeremiah, the 16th chapter. I'm going to start reading the ninth verse. Jeremiah 16 and 9. For this saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will cause to cease out of this place in your eyes, and in your days the voice of mirth, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride. And it shall come to pass that thou shalt show this people all these words. And they shall say unto thee, Wherefore hath the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? Or what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? Now the Lord is telling him, he said, listen man, I'm getting ready to take you out of this land. I put you in a land that has four voices. I put you in a land there for a reason, for four voices bring revelation, bring understanding, bring knowledge to establish you in my way. But instead you have rejected what I have said. You have not embraced what I have said. You have made excuses and compromises. For what I've said. So I'm going to take you out of this land. And so people are saying, well, no, what did we do wrong? We didn't do anything wrong. What did we do wrong? Why is God mad at us? Why is God upset? Well, that's what we do wrong. He's about to tell you. He says, then shall thou say unto them, because your fathers have forsaken me, saith the Lord, and have walked after other gods, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and not kept my law. And you have done worse than your fathers... You have done worse than your fathers, for behold, you walk every one of you after the imagination of his own evil heart. Don't you see he's looking at me saying, let me tell you what you did. You did not bring your carnal mind under subjection. You did not bring your flesh under subjection. You didn't do any of that. You didn't seek my voice. You didn't seek my way. What you wanted to do was seek the approval of the people. What you wanted to do was seek what men wanted and not what God wanted. Amen? Because look what he said. What you wanted to do, you didn't want the people to have to live by a standard. You didn't want the people to have to stand by the word of God. You didn't want the people to have to stand by the spirit. What you wanted them to do, whatever your little imagination is, run around in it. Let me explain something to you. I do not, I cannot look at the word of God, make an interpretation and a determination of what it means, and it doesn't, it's not backed up by any scripture, it's not backed up by any spiritual principle, and take that and say, well, I'm sorry, that's what I believe. Well, you can believe that all day long. That don't make it the gospel. That don't make it true. See, they wanted to go and not obey the word of God. They wanted to go and not do what God's word said. God said, serve the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Did I not see that? God said, serve the Lord thy God with all your heart, uh, with all your heart, soul, and might. Did we not read that? They did not want to do that. They didn't want to do that. They wanted to 
you know, have their own evil imaginations. Whatever I think that Bible says, Mike, that's what it says. Whatever fits my agenda, whatever fits my vision, whatever fits my plan, whatever fits my purpose, I will manipulate it and move it to fit that purpose. Well, I'm here to tell you something tonight, Josephine. I'm not here to manipulate anything the Word of God's got. Here's what I'm here to tell you. That Bible, you saw it twice, says you must serve the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. That's what it says. That I am preaching to you. You need to serve the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. You need to walk in Him, live in Him, speak in Him, breathe in Him. You need to have that voice operational and living in your life and you don't need to settle for nothing less if you settle for anything you're settling for something less amen let's go on I gotta hurry I want you to look I kind of skimmed over it but see Daryl son they were in a land God had brought them to a place where his blessings and his anointings were flowing and they weren't recognizing him. They weren't appreciating him. You know why they weren't appreciating him? Because they were looking for the things of the world. They weren't looking for the things of God. See, when you're looking for the things of God, revelation comes, you get excited. When you're looking for the things of God and somebody gets healed, whoo, you get excited. When you're looking for the things of God and somebody gets filled with the Holy Ghost, you go, yeah. But when you're looking for the things of the world, here's what you do. Man, this is taking so long. I want to go home. Can't they do this quicker? Come on. Isn't it funny when somebody's ministering to you, you don't want them to get in a hurry. But when they're ministering to your brother or sister, you want to quit. Let's go. That is the impatience of flesh. See, can I tell you something? In 2,000 years, never has the Spirit of God felt that way. Never. Never in 2,000 years did the Spirit of God say, this is taking too long. Never in 2,000 years did the Spirit of God say, we need to get moving. So that is a very clear indicator, you are in your flesh. Uh, uh, that is not the Spirit, you are in your flesh. Because if you was in the Spirit, you'd say, man, I want more. If you was in the Spirit, you'd say, I need more Spirit, more word, more power, more authority, more money. Let me tell you something. God wants to establish your feet on a solid foundation. But in order for that to happen, you got to get out of the mud. you got to get out of the quicksand you got to start walking on solid ground. Now, Daryl, did you see the voices that were in that land? Did you, Mike, did you see those voices that are in that land? That he's, he told them, so I'm going to take you out of it because you hadn't appreciated it. And you just want to walk with your own evil imagination. But let's look at these voices. They are cool. What's he say? Look here. He goes on that. It's right there first. Verse 9, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will cause you to cease out of this place in your eyes and in your days the voice of mirth, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride. Are you listening, Josephine? Come on, somebody, hear me. Have you got the four voices in your land? Oh, come on. Have you got those four voices in your land? And if you've got those four voices in your land, are you heeding what they're saying? Are you moving by the Spirit? Or are you operating by your own evil imagination? Which hinders these voices. Let's look at them. We'll do the easy ones first. The voice of the bridegroom. That means a personality, attitude, representation of Jesus Christ. Can you say I? And then, of course, the bride. But you got to understand what this is, though. The bride, when he says the bride in this particular passage, he's not talking about just the church. He's talking about the faithful church. You understand me? You're not a bride if you're not faithful. You get what I'm saying? You're not a bride if you're not faithful. Uh, Sister Jenny, if your if you're, uh, lamps are not trimmed and full of oil, if you're not waiting on the bridegroom, you're not ready. If you've been out there spinning your oil because you didn't appreciate it, if you've been out there doing your own things because you didn't appreciate the fact that the bridegroom was coming, oh, but you didn't have time to get on the bridegroom. You got to go out and do what your flesh wants to do. You got to go out and do what the world wants to do. I'm not going to wait on the bridegroom. The voice of the bridegroom, Jesus. The voice of the bride, the faithful church. For only a faithful church can truly receive his voice. 
Can you say amen? And let's go on and look. He says, the voice of gladness. What is gladness? That means you're excited. That means you're happy. That means you're full of joy, right? Who agrees that gladness means you're full of joy? That's what I mean. I believe the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. And we receive righteousness, peace, and joy in. I'm sorry, righteousness, peace, and joy in what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in what? In the Holy Ghost. So the voice of gladness is the Holy Ghost. And the reason there's joy and he's glad is because the bride is submitting to the bridegroom. Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. The voice of the bridegroom is in the land. Oh, come on. Jesus is in the land. Y'all ain't hearing me. The Holy Ghost is excited because the Word is in the land. Honey, the Holy Ghost is excited because illumination, understanding, revelation, and established Word is in the land. And he gets excited. He gets excited, Andrew, because it's a, not a bride looking to do something else. It's not a bride looking to cut down exposure to Jesus. It's not a bride looking to cut down uh, more things to not do for God. It's a bride looking to say, here am I, God. It's a bride looking to say, here am I, God. I love the voice of my bridegroom. Every time he speaks, my heart leaps. Every time he talks, I jump. I want the voice of the bridegroom in my land. Can you say amen? And the Holy Ghost. And the last voice is the voice of mirth. And I was looking at this, and all of a sudden I was praying. God said, you know what that is representing? I said, no, Lord. I mean, he said, it is me. And I said, it's you. What do you mean? He goes, it is my everlasting joy from the rescue of my children by Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. He says, when I'm in the land, I see the Word and I see the Spirit. I see what they've done. And I've seen how they brought that flesh down. How they've melted that flesh in the fire of the Holy Ghost. And you become a vessel for the finer. He said, I have myrrh. I am excited. I am happy. I am joyful. Because what the devil did was come and try to steal my creation. What the devil did was come and try to speak over my creation. But bless God, Jesus and the Holy Ghost, those two immutable things came together, took the devil down, and established the kingdom of God. In the hearts of men. So you wonder, you wonder how I know where you stand in the valley when I look and I don't see the voices in your land. Come on. When I don't see the Holy Ghost, when you're sitting there looking like this. You're not moving in the Holy Ghost. You're not walking in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost don't bring frowns. The Holy Ghost brings, brings joy. When you're sitting there trying to figure everything out in your mind, trying to put your head around it, wrap your head around it, all you're doing is like a merry-go-round going around, 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 every ends. Honey, bring that under subjection. Say, God, I may not get it all. God, I may not understand it all. God, I may not get it, but I'm going to bring it under subjection. I'm going to set my eyes upward from what's coming to my salvation. I'm going to let the spirit and anointing of God move on me and bring me forward. And I'm going to let the voices, the four voices in this land. That will speak. The voice of the bridegroom. The voice of the bride. Come on. The gladness, joy, righteousness, and peace of the Holy Ghost. And when all those elements are operational in your life, when you get the voices in your land, when you have those voices in your land, when the voices are in He's filled with myrrh. He's filled with joy. He's filled with happiness. He's filled with love beyond compare. Because he looks and he says, there you were. You were lost. You were dead. You were headed to hell. But Jesus reached out to you. The Holy Ghost begin to transform you. The Holy Ghost begin to bring that word alive. All of a sudden, a transformation begin to take place. You begin to crucify the flesh and ratify the spirit. You begin to overcome sin by the spirit and the anointing of God. And now the four voices are in your land. The four voices. 
are in that land. Amen? Praise God. Man, I love the Lord. Don't you just love Jesus? Who loves Jesus tonight? I love Jesus. Tonight. Look at yourself this next couple days. Do you have the four voices in your land? Do you have the voice of the bridegroom? Are you able to articulate it and put into the voice of a bride, a faithful church? And is the Holy Ghost in you operating in righteousness, peace, and joy? Or have you shut him down? And if all those elements are together, you will feel. It's one of the most powerful things more. It's very awesome. You will feel the myrrh of God. You will feel it. You will feel his joy. You will feel his overwhelming love for you. When his voice is in the land. Come here, JJ. When his voice is in the land. Amen. Stand right there, JJ. Lift up your hands and begin to worship the Lord, JJ. God said, in your heart, you just said a few seconds ago, I want those voices in my land. That's what you just said. And God said, son, get ready. You've already got those voices operating in your land. But God said, you're going to get something very special tonight. Something very unique is going to happen. You're about to feel the myrrh of God. In Jesus' name, now. There it is. Feel that. That is the joy of God. When you obey the voices, that is the joy of God. When you obey the voices. The voice of mirth, the ver voice of joy and happiness and peace. A voice that has, do you understand? That when you're talking about the voice of mirth, you're talking about no sadness is anywhere in it. No unhappiness is anywhere in it. Isn't that what we want to be? Isn't that what we want to do? Is that what you want to do, Mario? Step right here, put your hands up. Put your hands up, I'm going to seek the Lord. You don't need me, you just need God. Seek God. Seek God. Seek God. Seek God. Get ready, son. Those four voices are about to explode in you. Those four voices about exploding you. When you saw what happened to JJ, you said, man, I want that. Man, Lord, I like that. Is that what you said? Am I lying or did you t is that the truth? Yeah, that's the truth, isn't it? Yeah. All right, well, get ready. You're going to get it in about three seconds. Get men, get Start praising him. Start worshiping him. You're going to feel the mirth of the Lord coming. One, two, three. Boom, there's, there's the mirth of the Lord. Praise the Lord, the mirth of the Lord. The mirth of the Lord. Karen, step right out here. It's been like you've had sharks going around you just biting on your flesh, biting on your skin. The enemies tried to make you think there was no rock to stand on. There was no place to be. But he's a liar. Straight from in the pit of hell. The angels will stand for you. The angels will defend you. You need to understand something, Aaron. God has a plan for you. God has a calling for you. The devil hates it because there's an anointing in you. And there's a power and a spirit in you. Those voices are about to come alive in you. You're going to hear the voice of the bridegroom. You shall answer with the voice of the bride. And the Holy Ghost shall release the truth within you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want everyone to realize something tonight. These people are getting touched. These people are getting blessed. These people are being encouraged in their faith. Has nothing to do with me. Nothing. All I'm doing is being an obedient vessel. If a person gets touched and a person gets blessed, that's because they released to God and God did it. I didn't do it. I don't do anything except preach the gospel and try to be obedient. Come here, Darren, right over here. Man, you've been on my mind all night. Get over here. Whoo, man, I wish y'all could have saw this young man last night. This young man was a fireball last night. I'm very excited. He wants to be in our MIT program. I think that's great. Let's go over here right now. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. For son, you have crossed over a valley. You have come over a hill. And now it's time to walk into a new place. A place where the water is deep. A place where the anointing shall be. For I called you and none shall ever be able to stop it in Jesus name <laughs> praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord listen that is a walking talking miracle right there that is a walking talking miracle dad tell them why that's a walking talk died three times three times I'm responsive but the power of the God who you're hearing about tonight 
drug him up out of that mess, amen, by the power of the Holy Ghost. And now he lives, and now he serves God with everything he's got. Praise God. Give your kids over to I don't know about you, sweetie, but I do not want to be a secret disciple, yeah. and I do not want to be an undercover angel. I don't want there to be any question anywhere I go, no matter what I do. I want people to know I've got Jesus Christ living in my life. I want them to know I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I want them to know that the words that I speak are not my own, but whatsoever my Father saith, that I say unto you. That's what I want to be. I want to be verified, validated, and anointed and released by the Spirit and the power of God. Amen. Amen. All right, we've got a song coming up right now. This is from our praise team, and it's one of my very favorite. This is from Sister Tasha Sanders. Now, Sister Tasha Sanders came and was a part of our ministry when she was 18 years old, and she's been singing with me for almost 20-plus years. I'm so glad she sings for me. Sit back and relax. Here is Tasha, one of my all-time favorites, Precious Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand, I am tired, I am weak, I am worn through the storm. Precious Lord, and lead me home. Precious Lord, your Rose Dinner Theater presents The Summer of Motown featuring D. Hill. Running every Friday and Saturday evening at 6.30 p.m. from June 3rd to July 30th. To make reservations, contact our box office at 405-793-7779. Seven, 
or you can contact us on our Facebook page at the Yellow Rose Dinner Theater. We look forward to seeing you here at the Summer of Motown. has and will always be such a blessing to me. We want to thank you so much for tuning us in today. Listen, if you've got a prayer request, need somebody to join with you in prayer, pick up your phone. Give us a call at area code 405-793-1777. That's 405-793-1777. Or you can contact us on any of the social media platforms through the Revival for Christ Club Facebook page, my own Facebook, Jenny's Facebook. Contact us. We'll be more than happy to pray for you. We love to pray that prayer of faith. We love to pray a prayer that will bring a dynamic change to your life. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We hope we'll be back next week. We've got a great program in, for, in store for you as we bring Secret Disciples Part 3. But right now, let's put the devil oh, that's in his good, place. Everyone. Satan! Ha 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 ha! You are defeated! And Jesus is Lord! And it couldn't be any other way. We'll see you next week at the same time on the Mighty Sea Fan when we know our God has something special for you. Woo! My name is Ryan Colley. I'm the Administrative Vice President and International Evangelist of Revival for Christ Club International Ministries. We'd like to thank you so much for tuning into our program today. And if you would like to ignite the flame in your area, we would love to bring the love of Jesus to you. All you got to do is reach out to us by phone at 405-793-1777. You can also reach out to us on Facebook by direct message at Revival for Christ Club International Ministries or on YouTube. Also, if you would like to help us spread the flame around the world, you can do it in so many different ways. First off, you can do it through our cash app. That's RFC Roar. That's money sign RFC R O. A -R. Also, you can do credit card by phone at 405-793-1777. Now, once again, that's 405-793-1777. And finally, you can mail your support to 1005 Southwest 4th Street, Moore, Oklahoma, 73160. Once again, we'd like to thank everybody for tuning into our program today. Remember, we are a ministry with a vision built on a plan, the Word of God.